All righty, Coach. Thank you so much for joining us. Good. We Before will, we get uh, started, I want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. I want to make sure that we're all mindful of the, the time of the year. Uh, these kids uh, you know, fighting and straining and, and clawing and, and uh, being away from their families and all that. And I'm sure you guys are all experiencing the same thing. So I want to wish all of you guys a very happy Thanksgiving. I'm sure you have a lot of things to be grateful for. I know that I do. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful time of year. So thanks for thank you for that. All right, we're going to uh, keep it just to one question. We want to get through as many people as possible. So let's start with Dave Biddle, 247. Dave. Thanks, Mike. Hi, Kerry. Um, Coach Day said the issues on defense are mostly a matter of execution. Um, but is there anything about your scheme that you're reassessing at, at the current moment? Well, I think that uh, there's constant questions about how we're doing things and, and, and things that uh, you, you're always evaluating what, what you're doing and how you're doing. And I think that that's, uh, that, that's exactly what we're doing. So uh, most of the things I would agree with Coach Day uh, are execution-based, uh, but we've got to make sure that we're uh, doing things that are going to be the best for everybody uh, that's on the field. Thank you. All right, we'll go next to Joey Kaufman from the Columbus Dispatch. Joey. Kerry, how would you evaluate uh, your pass rush this season? Um, obviously, you weren't here last year, but it, it seems last year they were able to get a lot more sacks this year, but the pressure this year has been um, as good as, as last year. How, how would you just kind of put the, the pass rush up? Yeah, I think, I think we're getting uh, very good pressure. I think that there's a, 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 we had 28 pressures and 10 knockdowns in the game Saturday. We, we'd like for those things to finish in more sacks uh, obviously, I thought that uh, I thought their quarterback did a really nice job in, in standing in there and getting rid of the ball just before sacks uh, under a lot of pressure. And, and he was an accurate thrower in those situations. Uh, but but I think we've got a lot of guys uh, that can rush the passer. And I think I, I do think they're putting a lot of pressure on the quarterback. All righty, next up, Patrick Murphy, 247. Patrick. Kerry, looking back. Uh, at the at some of the big plays, I'm curious what you made of of what was going on there. It looked like Marcus a couple times maybe jumped a route that he didn't need to, but your eyes better than mine. What what did you see that that needs to be fixed on some of those plays in particular? Well, I, I think that first of all, we we have to fix the big plays. Uh, there's no question about that. I think that uh, uh, you're you're not inaccurate at all. I think sometimes we press or look to make a, a bigger play than what exists for us in the structure of our defense. And it's really important uh, that I do a better job of coaching that and making sure that, that we all understand uh, we, we don't need to go necessarily make all the big plays. We need to make sure that we're not chasing uh, something that, that's not there that creates a big play. Hey, next up, Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Bill? Yeah, Kerry, when you watched the tape, was it better than you thought it'd be or worse than you thought it would be? In it terms was, of uh, you know, well, that's a great question. It, it Those those uh, four plays in particular are, you know, those those are egregious. And so when you watch those, it, it doesn't make you feel good. Uh, there's there's so many good things, you know, and, and, and being ahead 35 to 7 and being where we've been in all those situations. And, and there were a lot of really, really good plays. But there's no question that just like all of you, that the focus ends up on those ones that don't uh, that, that don't go well, and uh, those are the ones that that have got all of our attention uh, this weekend and and will going forward. And and uh, those are those are fixable errors that have to be fixed. And uh, that that's that's our job. That's my job. Thanks, Gary. And happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate that. All right, we'll go next to Dan Hope, Eleven Warriors. Dan. Kerry, you guys only played five players on the back end on Saturday. Is that enough? Are, are there other guys who need to get in there and, you know, maybe give you guys some different combinations on the back end? Yeah, I think it's a great question. I, I think that uh, as the season continues to progress, we would certainly like to play more guys and to have more uh, opportunities for guys to play. Uh, I've always believed that. And so uh, we're, we're constantly uh, looking uh, for – those opportunities uh, to get more guys on the field. Thanks, Gary. Sure. All righty, we'll go next to Doug Lamaris, Cleveland.com. Doug? Hey, Kerry. Just Hi, Doug. How you doing, Kerry? 
Great. Thanks. Look, looking forward to watching Braden on Thanksgiving Day. Hey, uh, good. Thank you. The, uh, just a specific play just to help us be smarter in, uh, in how we analyze this stuff. The deep ball when seven was in coverage and Marcus looked like he came up and helped tried to help on maybe an underneath route where the linebackers were in some coverage. Yep. What, what should a safety do in that situation? What's, what's, what, how's the, de- the defense designed to work there? Cause it wound up that seven had the guy one-on-one and once the guy got a step, it kind of was over. Yeah. I, I think it's a combination of things. I think it's a single high defense. You'd like to have a single high safety in the, in the deep post area. I think something flashed in front of his eyes and uh, that makes things, uh, challenging sometimes and, and uh, uh, routes that you that you know obviously if we had that play back we would like to play that differently I, I also uh, don't excuse how we played it on the outside you know we got to play that better uh, there too so uh, you're you're accurate on on both counts um, but in single high defense you would like to have a have that guy back there deeper okay thank you Kerry yep all righty we'll go next to Austin Ward from Leonard Monroe Austin Hey, Gary. Happy Thanksgiving. Hey, Austin. Thank you. You too. Um, we know that you're going to coach your guys extremely hard, whether you win or lose. Um, one of the things that Coach Day brought up after the game is when you're looking at personnel and scheme and then the way you're teaching and coaching, like those are the three areas you look for improvement. When you're looking evaluating yourself from Saturday, where do yep. you think maybe – what is it you think that you need to do this week? Well, I, th- I, think, I think I have to do everything better, uh, Austin. I think we have to – you know, obviously, um, whatever you see on the field is a reflection of, of what you've taught and, and how you've taught. And, and so when, when any player uh, at any position makes a mistake, that uh, as his coach, you should take that personally, and I do. And uh, th- those are things that, uh, that, that I have to fix, and, and that I have to do a, a better job. And, and I think it's important that, you know, I tell the kids all the time that, it's my opinion that, that when we make a mental mistake, that's, that's my fault. That's something that I didn't get coached well enough, that I didn't get taught well enough. And uh, that, that's, that's my responsibility. And so, you know, that, that's, that's where we've got to see improvement um, this week. Thanks, Kerry. Sure. Okay, we've got time for just a couple more. We'll go to Bill Landis from The Athletic. Bill. Hey, Kerry. <clears throat> um, Hi, Bill. You guys have – you have three linebackers right now who are playing really well, and I know you took a hit on the back end when, when Cam Brown got hurt. So, so given all of that, how comfortable are you right now playing in nickel, and uh, especially when you get into games like, like Saturdays where a team's dropping back to throw the ball 50 times? It still seemed like you guys stayed in your base defense for the most part. Yeah, I think that uh, – I think that that was true on, uh, on second down, Bill. I think on third down we were able to get our third down package on the field and we're comfortable with that. Uh, played the nickel in second down uh, in the fourth quarter. Uh, and so uh, you're, you're right. The three linebackers are playing really well. We've, we've, we've tried to manipulate and use some of the um, similar scheme types of things with that group that we've done with the, the nickel and the, and the uh, penny package. And so that's uh, because they are playing well. And you do hate to take those guys off the field. So uh, without giving away too many answers or too many secrets, I guess, I would say that those guys are playing well and we're, we're going to continue to try to enhance what we can do with them. All right, we've got time for two more. We'll go first to Nathan Baird, Cleveland.com. Nathan. Hey, Kerry, you talked before the season about um, having to you know, prepare a lot of guys for, you know, the eventualities or the kind of the unpredictability of this season. Yep. And in, in both you and Ryan are talking about trying to get more guys on the field, maybe to, to prove themselves. I'm just wondering, are, are you getting close to being forced into a situation where you have to take a leap of faith with some of the younger guys? And, and how tough is that as a coach to do when um, maybe a guy on the field isn't doing that well, but you haven't necessarily seen another guy get on the field to, to, to show you something else? I think it's a great challenge. I think you're, it's a great question, Nathan, because it's easy to sub uh, an interior defensive lineman uh, and let them get experience. It's much harder on the islands of the secondary uh, to do that. And so those are things that, that, uh, that we would like to do. And, and, and those are things that when it's 35 to 7, you, 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 know, you, would, you would look forward to having that opportunity to do that. Uh, and, and so we're just uh, we're practicing a lot of depth. Uh, we're not playing a lot of depth. 
and and some of that is a function of the way these second halves have gone and um so we, we that that's something that we would like to be able to do you're you're absolutely right and, and that leap of faith is a big one so you know that we'll see what happens this weekend sorry just to clarify so it's it's harder to do that with secondary guys just because they're on they're more exposed than you would be if you're just playing one of the four defensive line spots well, sure. If you're a, you know, if a defensive lineman steps to the wrong gap uh, on something, then that's one issue. If a secondary player makes a mistake, it's a, it, it can result in points, and and that's the, that's the bigger area, right? When when uh, when you're when you're playing the game, you want to make sure that that uh, you're protecting the team, and so those that's always been that's always a reasonable challenge in the back end. And the last question for Coach Combs, we'll go to Brendan Gulick. That guy's now on Sports Illustrated. Hey, Kerry. Hi, Brendan. Hey, just want to uh, follow up on your response to Patrick Murphy's question. So it, it sounds to me like both you and Coach Day now have a couple of times alluded to the design of this defense is not to allow big plays. Right. How do you coach guys? How do you walk that fine line of telling guys to, to pick their spots to be aggressive because you want them to – create turnovers, you want them to make uh, big plays defensively uh, without being over-aggressive and getting away from the scheme. Yeah, I think that that's what experience teaches you. And I think that you're exactly right. It's a very fine line because if, if we just back everybody up, right, 20 yards, then that's not good defense either. We, we've got to experience these things. We've got to make these plays. We've got to feel them. We've got to feel them in practice and change some things up in practice the way we're doing some of those things to give them maybe a little bit more of that kind of exposure uh, on Tuesday and Wednesday that, that rather than Saturday, if that makes sense, Brendan. And so uh, experience is the, is, the, is the greatest teacher and, and we got a good dose of it on Saturday. And so we're, you know, we're, we're going to have to uh, continue to, to improve on those decisions when, when, what is the acceptable risk and what is the, what is the risk reward for how I play a specific play? And, and, and that's important for, for us going forward. Thank you. All right, Coach, thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate Thanks, it. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. And we'll have Jonathan Cooper here in just a moment.